this last chapter is going to be dealing with mastering processes. And in fact, all of them are dynamics processes. The first one is a multiband dynamics processor that you're looking at now, the Fordyne. And then we're going to be looking at a bus compressor. And finally, the infamous ozone maximizer, an essential tool for anybody serious about mastering inside reason. We're going to look at the interface of each one in detail, and then we'll look at audio being passed through each one as well to give you an idea of what these extensions are capable of. So first of all, let's start off with the Fordyne. We have seen some fairly feature rich interfaces with a lot of knobs on during these rack extensions courses, but this one probably takes the biscuit and it's fairly complex. Well, it looks fairly complex at first glance at least. There's a lot of knobs here and there's a lot of controls, but as we've seen with loads of the other complicated looking rack extensions, it's all about repetition. There's three splitters and four bands. So it's a four band multi-band processor with three crossover points. We'll get into the crossover points in a minute, but realistically what we need to concentrate on are the bands here. And within each band, and let's look at band one, let's focus on band one. There are three processors. We've got a compressor, a limiter, and a gate, and this is repeated throughout the bands. And there are three controls for each processor. And these are repeated, these are exactly the same. So we've got ratio, attack, and release. We have even got the same soft knee control. And then we've got an overall makeup gain, an overall dry wet mix, and an overall band volume, like a gain for this band. There's also an input gain at the top and some various other controls that we'll look at. We've also got a threshold and metering. There is a gain reduction meter here for compression and limiting. And then you can uh, see gate reduction here as well using this little control. So basically, once you've understood that it's three different processes and it's the same controls for each one, and then we look at the whole thing, it suddenly makes more sense, you know? So we've just got the same band repeated four times and then the same processes within each band. Now, often when I use this processor, I often just use the compressor. Um, in each band, but there are times when you'll want to use the gate and there are of course times when you'll definitely want to use the limiter if you've got some wayward transients that just won't behave themselves, the limiter will lock right down on these. Before you get into processing in each band, you'll need to understand how the bands are split up. So we've got three crossover points here. What happens is the audio comes into splitter number one in the center. Then you decide your main crossover point, which is say, let's make it reasonably central. So I'm going to say I'm going to make it one kilohertz or something like this. So everything below there goes to splitter two. So within splitter two, we then say, okay, everything under 270 hertz goes into band one and everything above 270 hertz up to 988 hertz will go into band two. Then everything from 988 hertz to, let's say, 5K, will go into band three and other, everything above 5K will go into band four. Hopefully that makes sense. So let's just run through that one more time. Audio comes in here, is split between two points. Everything below this point here goes into splitter two, which is then split again. So everything above this point goes into band two. Everything below it goes into band one. Everything above this point in splitter one goes across here and everything below this point goes into band three. Everything above goes into band four. So it's essentially one big splitter, left or right, and then left or right again between these splitters. So pretty straightforward once you understand the basic topology. Then each splitter has its own mode. So really a splitter or a crossover is sort of like an EQ curve. That's how you can think of it. Like a, it's a filter bank essentially, internally. So if you think of a low pass or a high pass filter in an EQ, you will decide the curve that it has. And it's often 24 or 48 or 12 dB the same in a synthesizer, and this will give you uh, the extremity of the curve, so how extreme it uh, cuts off the, the frequency. So you're looking at you know lower numbers being slightly more organic and forgiving, and higher numbers being more of an extreme cutoff. And you'll hear this when we run audio through it. Now, the perfect models, from what I can hear, are very digital models, are very exact, and they allow no leakage or audio. Uh, to pass that point. The analog models are more forgiving again, and they seem to be more, more musical. Now I use hardware multiband compression. These analog filters here are very similar to the hardware that I use. So I would say that the hardware and these analog filters models are very similar to what you would find in hardware. The perfect ones are very digital and more exact. It depends what you want. And you can mix and match these across the bands. So 
you can really make your choices how you make this processor up. So there we go. It does seem complicated. There are a lot of controls here. It's a feature rich processor. There's no doubt about that. It gives you a lot of control and it's really, you know, a, a very capable mastering tool and something that the pros would be happy to use. I mean, I would definitely use this in a mastering situation. I think that it's sort of a new age of mastering inside Reason when we're starting to see processors like this. Next, I'm going to show you the entire mix running through it. What I'll do is I'll set it up and I'll explain what I've done. I think that's probably the best way forward. And that's what we'll look at in the next video.